Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ultimate Job Search and Career Podcast. I am Bill, the company's expert, and today we're going to talk about how to answer the job interview question, walk me through your resume. Okay, this is uh, an episode that's entirely based upon a question I received in the comments. This is from Jason, and Jason says, Mr. Company's Expert, can you address the proper method for walk me through your resume? I have 25 years of experience, so I can talk about my resume for 20 minutes. I feel like I either rush through it or talk too long. Any suggestions? Yes, Jason, yes, I... uh, do have some suggestions for how to answer this question. It's extremely similar to the classic job interview question, tell me about yourself. Okay, usually this is used as an icebreaker at the beginning of uh, the interview. It's used as something to get like the conversation going. Um, And similar to tell me about yourself, it's very open-ended. Okay, so you don't know... A, how long to talk, and you don't know B, what to say. Uh, We're going to address both of those today. So let's dive in. Okay, so this question, okay, walk me through your resume. First of all, when it comes to how long to talk, I recommend uh, two minutes maximum, preferably 45 seconds. Okay, let me explain. Um, Believe it or not, they actually don't really care about your work history. Okay, recruiters and hiring managers, really, they don't care about hearing your life story or hearing your uh, career summary. Okay, they don't care about that. Uh, You are not at the job interview to talk about something you did years ago that has nothing to do with the job that you're currently interviewing for. Okay, that is time that is wasted. Okay, if you only have a certain amount of time in an interview to explain yourself to them and to give them a compelling case that why they should hire you, you don't want to waste that time talking about things that are irrelevant, like probably a lot of things on your resume, okay? Um, Now, no doubt there's going to be things on your resume that are relevant, but my point is that a lot of it, I'd say maybe 75%, uh, is not really gonna sell you particularly okay uh it may say that you know you are in the running okay you have some skills you know maybe you could infer from that you might be a contender but they're not really gonna sell you as the candidate that they should hire okay um so you're not there to talk about your history do not go down your entire resume explaining everything on it and giving the backstory behind everything on it. Uh, First of all, you're going to run out of time. And secondly, most of that is irrelevant. Okay. Um, Now also remember that if this is used as an icebreaker, okay, so if they ask you this question, when you first sit down, and it's how they open the interview, okay, it's just that it's an icebreaker, it's to get the conversation started. Okay. It's not really the core of what they want to know about, okay? Uh, The other purpose of this question, incidentally, uh, if they say, walk me through your resume, okay? Uh, It's an open-ended question. Uh, It doesn't have a a very concise, short answer. You could answer this question with an hour-long lecture, really, right? Um, The other purpose here is to eliminate you if you open your mouth and out come a bunch of red flags, okay? Uh, For example, if they say, walk me through your resume, and you say, ah, well, I don't really know what's on my resume, I just threw it together, you know, 10 minutes before I came here, you know, something like that, that's a red flag. That tends to signal that you're not serious, or you're not organized, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the other purpose of this question. The reason why it's so open-ended is because they're basically saying, you tell us what you think is important that we should know. And if you then proceed to tell them something that's completely irrelevant, or they're just not interested in that kind of material, uh, that could be a problem, okay? So that's the other thing that's going on here. Okay, so for all those reasons, when Jason is asking, how long should I talk? That's why I say preferably 45 seconds, and under no circumstances ever go over two minutes. Okay, this is not a really in-depth, important question. This is just an opening 
uh, kind of thing to get people talking. It's a very general thing to see what you're going to say, right? Okay. So we want to get off this question as soon as possible so that we can get to more specific questions uh, where we give very impactful reasons why they should select us as the candidate, as the person. Okay. So that brings us to the second part of this, which is what to say. Now that we know how long to talk, what the hell are we going to say? What should we be talking about? Well, you need to keep it relevant. And what I mean by that is you need to keep it relevant to this job that you're interviewing for. Okay. Um, people, how can I put this? People, like to talk about themselves. They only really care about themselves. They don't tend to care about strangers and the details of what a stranger thinks and a stranger's personal history, uh, you know, unless it's extremely compelling. Uh, you generally don't care because you don't know the person, right? Um, so that's kind of what's going on with people listening to you talk about your resume. If it doesn't relate directly to the job, A, it's boring. And B, it's irrelevant, okay? So, you know about this job. You know what the requirements are. Presumably, they were written in the job posting where it says we're looking for someone who has this, 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 and this, right? You know, these skills, this many years experience doing different things, these traits, uh, you know, interest in these areas, you know, whatever. They've given you a list of requirements that they're looking for, okay? And in the job interview, your job is to communicate to them how you have all of those in spades, okay? There is nothing that they are looking for that you don't have. That's your job in the interview, okay? And as you explain this, the other indirect things that are happening in the interview is that they're getting a sample of your soft skills. Okay, they're seeing how friendly you are. They're seeing how enthusiastic you are. They're seeing how professional you are. And in your discussion, they're seeing how uh, you perform under pressure. They're seeing how organized you can, uh, you can be when you organize your thoughts. Uh, they're seeing your presentation, how you dress, you know, your grooming and, and how you carry yourself. They're getting a free sample of your soft skills, okay? But the stuff that should come out of your mouth, the information that you want to communicate directly is how you meet all the requirements, okay? So, on your resume, there will be presumably some material that answers uh, the direct requirements for the job. If they're looking for, say, five years experience in customer service, okay, presumably on your resume, You'll have a lot of things on your resume that don't have anything directly to do with customer service, but you will have maybe one or two or possibly more mentions of customer service, okay? And how you've done it in your previous jobs or how you studied it at school or whatever. So when it comes time to answer this question and you have to go through your resume, Presumably, you know that they're looking for five years of experience in customer service. So as you go down your resume, choose that to be one of the items that you mention. Okay, keep it relevant. It has to tie directly to what these people are looking for. Okay, and if you do that, then they'll be interested in your answer and uh, they will take note of it. Okay, um, so only mention stuff that relates to this job and its requirements. Now. If you want to get into more of the nitty gritty details on that, um, what a lot of people will have on their resume is they will have lists of duties and responsibilities uh, that they uh, that, that, are, that are assigned to each of their previous uh, jobs that they have on their resume. OK, so if you have um, a previous, say, your previous position, OK, you worked at this company or this organization, and this was your job title, and here's a list of the things that you did and the things you were responsible for, okay? So a lot of people will have those type of items listed on their resume, okay? Um, so th those, are, those are skills, duties, responsibilities, 
um, and things like that. Okay, so you can mention those when they're relevant to this job that you're inter interviewing for now, okay? In addition, depending on the level of your job, okay, and depending on uh, if you're sort of a first-time job seeker or you're a veteran job seeker, you know, you've, you have a long, uh, multi-decade career already under your belt, okay? Other things you can put on your resume are accomplishments, okay? Um, or if you're from Britain, accomplishments. Um, and your accomplishments, they're going to be in either money or percentage improvement. Okay, so an accomplishment is something where you explain that you had this impact. Okay, uh, usually, as I say, in money, in, in, in an amount of money saved or the amount of money generated. Okay, or percentage of improvement. Okay, so if you um, worked on a project and you, uh, you know, in, you increased the performance of that particular department by 12% or something, you would say that. Or you reduced the lead times, you know, that it took to press, uh, uh, process customer orders by 15% or something, you can say that. Those are accomplishments, okay? Um, usually a good resume, you have a mix. You have a mix of duties and responsibilities on the one hand, and then you have accomplishments on the other hand. Okay, so depending on what they're most interested in hearing, you can pull out either of those. Okay, if it's a lower level job, generally speaking, you'll be talking about duties and responsibilities. If it's a higher level job, like a management position or even an executive management position, it'll be in terms of accomplishments. Okay. So those are the terms you're going to you're going to speak in. Uh and making sure that it ties directly with what they're looking for for the current job, okay? And then finally, the thing I want to say is something everybody has to keep in mind is especially if you're dealing with recruiters, okay? But this applies to hiring managers too. Try and use their terminology. Okay? If you read a job description, uh, in, in the form of a job posting and you look at the requirements um, there are different words used to describe the same thing the example I always use uh, it's an accounting term you know one person will describe it as profit another person usually an accountant will describe it as net income okay two terms that for most intent and purposes mean exactly the same thing now here's the deal if you're dealing with a recruiter a recruiter is someone that generally doesn't have a lot of expertise in the subject matter of the job they're recruiting for. Okay, they're, they're just handed a job description and told, find me some candidates that meet all these requirements. Okay, that, that's a recruiter's job. They get paid when they come up with a list of candidates that meet all of those requirements. Okay, now they could get a variety of different types of jobs thrown at them. Um, this one's an accounting job. Another one could be an engineering job. Another one could be, uh, you know, a medical administrator job. Now the recruiter doesn't have a background in engineering or accounting or administering a hospital, right? They just receive these job descriptions and their job is to go out and find candidates that have all those items. Okay. So let's pretend on the job, uh, description this particular company was looking for, maybe it's a manager type job, and they were looking for somebody who has a history of boosting profits. Okay, that's what it says. You know, I, I'm, we're looking for someone with a track record, a history of profit boosting. And that's the term that they're using. Okay, wouldn't be the term I use, but that's the term they're using. Now, when you get to the interview... Don't start talking to them about how you've accelerated, uh, you know, upward net income dynamics or something. Okay. Talk to them about how you've boosted profit, right? That way they recognize the terms and you know that they understand that, you know, you meet that requirement. There's, there should be no, how can I put this? There should be no translation necessary that these people have to do to realize that you meet requirements, okay? So make sure that your lingo, your terminology, your lexicon matches what they have written in the job description, okay? And that's how you're gonna 
You're going to answer this question. You're going to keep it relatively short. You're only going to talk about things from your resume that match what these people are looking for. And when you explain it, you're going to use their terminology. Okay, I know it's a pretty tall order, but that's the goal. That's the, uh, the ideal to shoot for. If you can do that, um, there's no chance that you will bore them. There's no chance that you will condemn yourself, as it were, by opening your mouth and saying something at just a complete turn off to these people. That's a red flag. Um, there's no chance that you could be telling them things that, they're, that is irrelevant to what they're wanting to hear. Okay. And that way you make, a, especially if this question is at the beginning of an interview, that way you start off your interview on a, a very positive note. Okay. Uh, you look, look like you have a lot of potential. And going from that point, if you just build upon uh, these elements and you explain further as they throw different questions and more specific questions at you, you build on this idea where you speak to the points they're looking for, you speak to the requirements, use their terminology, and you zero in in what you know they're looking for. Okay, you do that, you'll be fine. So hopefully that helps. Thank you very much to uh, Jason for sending that in. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I read all the comments. And as always, if you would like to go further into uh, how to answer job interview questions beyond my YouTube videos, I have a course called Get Hired. There's a link in the description. Check it out. Uh, it's the sort of ultimate guide that I've put together uh, for being able to pass not only job interviews, but the entire hiring process, how everything works, especially for mid-level jobs. It's, it, these concepts work for lower-level jobs. They also work ideally for mid-level jobs. Okay, we're talking like middle management and things like that. So uh, check that out if you are interested. Thank you so much for your attention. You guys are awesome. And I will see you on the next, next video. Take care.